Good afternoon everybody, Martin Hargrave here. Um, today is the 9th of March 2022 and today I'm joined by a chap um, over in Denmark. Uh, some of you might know, um, I think a few of you might know Babin Plays. Certainly people in my era know and I was just saying that a lot of people I also know that, that don't even play badminton know this name. Morton Frost, how are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks uh, for That's the invitation. Third time lucky. I'm sorry, technical. I'm oh my goodness. This is what you get for running a, a, a YouTube channel in your bedroom. You know, this is why we need badminton. T Was it TV badminton two? They call it in Denmark, where they have the studios and all of that. I, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm not really into it. I'm I'm a lot lot, lot worse than you. As a dude, just easy. I, I don't think. I'm I've never issued an invitation for any sort of uh, chat with anyone. Thank so um, I only get invited and then I, I try to press something and then suddenly out of the blue it's coming. <laughs> and, it, and it works. Yeah, that's great. I've, uh, well, I've made a whole list of questions. I've actually got, how many have I got? I got up to number 20 and then I've got two people, but I think there'll be things in between, in between these things. Normally that's what happens with these things, but I'll not try and hold you up for much longer. Um, I've, I think I've taken enough of your day to be talking about these things. Question number one. Here's question number one for you, right? Here we go. How tall are you? How tall am I? Yes. Uh, I'm six foot. Are you? Yeah. 182, 83, that's it. In, so my, um, in my imagination, you're a lot taller. You're like Victor Axelson, Anna's, Anna's kind of size. Because I, what I remember about you, something I learned, that I'm, in, I'm 51, and what I... I think you were quite prominent in my coaches. I went to county coaching and, you know, I was always encouraged to watch videos of footwork. Your footwork was always very, very good. And the ease that you move around the cor corner to corner, I found was really amazing. Uh, for me, being such a, I'm five foot seven, so it was always a nightmare to get from corner to corner. I just remember them saying, now, if you watch Morton, watch how he foots, watch how, you know, shadow bump was always a thing, wasn't it? Did you do a lot of that? Did you work a lot on your footwork? Mm, not really. Didn't you? I, I, I'm going to disappoint a lot of people here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think that I was very fortunate. I, I have a very good athletic upbringing. Uh, from my school time, I had a very, very good PE teacher mm. who really um, sort of got us through the ropes of everything. And... Um, I, I just enjoyed it very much. Um, I played football from I was four or five years old. I was allowed to join the club even though you were supposed to be seven. But I just I loved the game of football so much and uh, my parents, they gave in and uh, I was allowed to join the club. Um, then later on when I was seven or eight, I, um, I joined the badminton club because I joined my dad for one of his sessions one day. He was... Uh, the best badminton player in in my little town and uh, I just joined him for a day and um, I said to him I, I want to play badminton and did you, so, did you, want to, did you do, you, do you remember kind of wanting to be as good as him and be able to beat him eventually and did you play against him more no, no? <laughs> that's why I'm saying I'm, I'm going to disappoint so many people Not at all. Um, because I, I I come from a, a very tiny little place. This is five thousand people living there, and um, we have a Bampton Hall, two Bampton Courts. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than a church hall, I would say. And uh, <laughs> so you, you can imagine what we're talking. Well, that's about. quite. Do you know that's quite a UK experience? You know, I've interviewed over a hundred players, and that's quite a UK experience. You know, church halls, radiators along the side, beams. Yes. High serving it, Freezing. high serving it across the top of the beams. That, kind of, that it's it's exactly. not like nowadays where you see, you know. When I was talking to somebody, Michael Simpson in Kent, who who developed a, a made a centre for the Olympics with twenty four courts in it, and Kent was was just it's just bewildering, isn't it? You know, as much height as you could take. I mean, you look at these arenas now and you think, wow, you know. Yeah, yeah, it was totally different, but I. I never really sort of thought, I, I never had um, an idol, I never had heroes. 
I simply just enjoy the game. I enjoy the game of football. I enjoy the game of uh, badminton, of course. But I play basketball, volleyball, track and fields, um, handball, you name it. I, I played sport. quite a lot of sport. sports. And I, I play chess, if you know you're not playing. That's, ta- that, that's, that's tactical stuff, right? That's good. It is. It's pretty good. Yeah, amazing. And so... And how did you land on badminton then? Did you just think you were? Did you? And also, at what point did you kind of dismiss those other things and say, "No, I'm just going to focus on that bit"? How did you decide? Mm-hmm. Or did was it a conscious thing? Or did you just end up playing more than any, any other sports? Or I, I think I, I was actually quite good track and field. I, uh, I was a good high jumper, really? uh, and I never practiced, uh, but I was. I think my record is one ninety-seven. Oh. I think is the best. Well. Uh, but I, I never really practiced. It was just for fun in the afternoons now and again with the boys. So um, uh, just sport one by one sort of fell away, and uh, it ended up being uh, badminton and football. And um, then I sprained my ankle quite badly in a football match and the badminton season was supposed to start and it ended up to, for me to be a really really good badminton season I, I did extremely well for a junior coming into the senior ranks and i thought okay i possibly better play badminton yeah. so, so it's not a decision What's the, what was the what was your coaching like at Barberton? Was it just your dad coached you, or did you have a coach? Or? I never had a coach. Really? No. <laughs> that's why I really? say I'm going to disappoint. Really? really, that's amazing, though. No, it's amazing. You never had a coach. No, the the thing I I was very fortunate that the tiny little place, the club, was actually having uh, good players. Uh, on local level, but still good players. Uh, players with uh, good technique, uh, good footwork, um, good understanding of the game. Um, they obviously left the club one by one, going to Copenhagen and played for the bigger clubs and so on. But um, um, I had someone to copy. I had someone to look at. Oh, that's the way to do it. That's how you're going to do it. And I simply just copy paste everything I saw. And um, just enjoy the game. I hated to lose. I just wanted to win, and um, that's just kept me going. And was there so? At what point did you say? I'm always fascinated with the kind of idea that that somebody would say. I mean, you're a professional. Did you do what, what were you like at school? Did you study other things? What What were you like at education? Um, I. I have my what, O levels and A levels, what you call it in England. Um, I went on to university um, when I was twenty. Um, to do what? To and, do what? Uh, Sorry. I I studied history at really? the university in Copenhagen. Really? Yes, and then later on I studied uh, economics as wow. well at the university. Um, I have to say and admit that uh, I never finished anything uh, because Bampton completely took over really? my life and and I never I actually never got to finish my university degree. What was the so what uh, that was a, that's one of my questions if you hadn't been a Bampton player what would you have been? Mm, I think I would have been a um, high school teacher. Really? I think that's probably what I would. But do you, are you still quite? I can I can imagine the kind of the I guess the badminton and the commentating kind of plays down to that history thing of the statistical, like, you know, the interesting conversation with Steen about him being a chemist, chemist and such a statistician. Where maybe you, you know, do you study head to heads and do you study, you know, the last time they played together? Did that and does that interest you? Do you think because of the history thing or of your part of your brain maybe? It's part of the brain, but yes, I, I do study it. I, I have, I think, about 750 profiles mm-hmm. on all the various players from around mm-hmm. the world. 
and I update them after all the tournaments as soon as they get to quarterfinals and up. If they lose first or second round, I, I do not bring it into my profile. Um, then anything um, interesting, if they beat someone they were not supposed to beat, according to the rankings, um, anything unusual I would bring into the profile. I, I will sort of keep updating it all and I have it uh, as and when I go to tournaments so uh, I only have to prepare the actual tournaments as so and when tell me what does that look like is it a book is it a spreadsheet is it a document what is it is it a ledger is it a ledger <laughs> it's up in the sky <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it might disappear one day you never is know it a spreadsheet? <laughs> what is it what does it consist of is it a, is it a digital document or is it a, a book is it good? That's good, right? Wow. Um, I'm really you onto are. it. <laughs> you say, the way you've been talking to me, you're not technical at all, but you start to sound really... When you, It's funny, isn't it, when everybody talks about the cloud, the point of the sky, it's quite funny. <laughs> it always makes me laugh. <laughs> Just because of the marketing of, of cloud. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. Okay, why, why did you start playing? So you'd say that... Why, why did you start playing was... And, and did you have any other sports? You were into all sports, really. Um and badminton. So there's a question I was interested in. So when you said you were quite good at it, what was your measure? Was it just other people at the hmm. club? Was it your dad? Or how did you know you were good at it? Uh, badminton is easy wow. to know whether you are making any progress because as and when you're playing tournaments, you're progressing in tournaments, uh, you know, you, you get a certain sort of ranking. Uh, even as juniors, we got see that if you were any good at the tournaments and so on so you it's easy to gauge whether you are good or not good in badminton i think uh, it's it's so systematic it's so well defined i think um football is is very different i, I our local team actually did play really well on sealand and uh, there was a big club uh, about 30 k's away from um, my hometown and um, I was about to join their best team when uh, I had that injury with my ankle and then decided okay I'm not going to do it so um, I was I was a decent footballer yeah I want to go back to I'd um, like to go go back to, if we could go back to the university so when you stopped you, you didn't finish your degree um, I guess the distraction from that was an event a tournament or something and or you just focused on sport what what what, what was the catalyst? You just thought, I'm not enjoying this, or what was it? Uh, the, <laughs> no, no, the problem was that um, every time I had to go for my exams, it was in January, and really? it was in, uh, June, in May or June. And um, every year, there's a big tournament in, in January. At the time, it was the Japan Open. Um, and, of course, in May, it was the World Champs or the Thomas Cup or whatever. There's always a big tournament. So if, if it would take me five years uh, to do the degree, it would take me 10 years because I could only be at half of them. And uh, I had to skip every January as well. So it was, it was kind of easy. <laughs> to, to, oh, I prefer to go and play badminton and not do my exam. And uh, I'll do it next time. I'll do it next time. And then, of course, eventually, I, I never got around. And what does it, you know, that you, your, your motivations um, back at that time, you know, I mean, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what what money was like in, in Denmark back in the day with badminton and tournaments and winning. And w Was money a motivator to win for you? That's the Wasn't it? No. No, I just want to win. I just wanted to get first to 15 and that was it. <laughs> So um, you never uh, very competitive, very competitive, but uh, just wanted to win. And what do you think of it now? Would it, you know? Do you know? You know, I'm always I'm interested. You know, in the football and that kind of thing is so popular now, and you know, kids want to be football players, and and you know, the parents say to them, "Right, what do you want to do?" Is well, I just want to be a footballer, and, and dad says, oh, "Come on, yeah, that's all good and all that, but come on." Um, what do you really want to do? <laughs> Did you have that conversation with your parents? Did that happen? Mm, actually not. Really? No. Um, I think my parents, they um, they allowed me to follow my heart. Nice. And, um, 
And but I, I, I would say I, it was a very sensible heart. Uh, I was really honestly trying to get my education. I it was not I was not just being lazy. Yeah. Um, no, I, I really tried. I, I went for exams. I, I was very close to finish my history degree. Um, so I, I really honestly tried. Uh, somehow Bampton always got across and it was, it was tricky. Um, and then, of course, more and more money came into the game as, as we progressed through the 80s. And um, eventually I decided, OK, I, I'll have to go 100% on this and, and do the very best I can. And so that was the, and then there's a conscious decision of how can I live on this? How can I actually make, you know, where everybody else is, all my friends are, you know, got jobs and, you know, having, earning salaries every month and all those kind of things. These are the trade-offs, aren't they? It's kind of um, feast or famine, I suppose. In you. And again, it, that, does that then become, did it become a thing where you think, right, if, I, if, I, if I win this? And, and do you think it ever, um, do you think it ever affected your, your performance did you do you think you ever do you ever think you were ever pressured for for you know when when money as the money gets sorry i'm rambling a bit but when the money gets bigger morton do you think it becomes a consideration when you're actually standing there on court and, and well now or even for you did you ever think god if i win this i can buy that car or i can i can do, not buy a car but you, you understand what i mean you know maybe i can do whatever did it become like that <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it, it, it never played on my mind. I never, ever, ever thought about it. Um, and I can assure you I'm not into cars at all. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> so as long as you've got four wheels yeah. and a steering wheel. Yeah, but you, you yeah, understand my principle, my principle thought. It, we, it was never a thing. We always quite... You know, have you ever, I suppose, how can I put this? Have you ever struggled for money? You know, as a, have you ever struggled for money in your career as a badminton player? Or were you quite fortunate with your parents? Did they support you a lot? Did you work as well as play badminton? Where did money live in your life, in your world? Um, I, always, I have always felt in my entire life that I have got money enough. I've been very fortunate. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah that's nice. Um, even when I was not earning a lot, I still felt extremely fortunate. I, I of course, had low expenses and so on. But I have always felt that I've had money in my life and it's not been an issue. Um, That's great. I, I, went, I went to to London in uh, 1985 uh, and that was due to the fact that I made really good uh, sponsorship contracts. Mm -hmm. And uh, the tax system in Denmark is extremely heavy. So if, if you earn a lot of money over, let's say, a five-year time span, you also pay an awful lot in tax. Mm -hmm. So I actually decided to move to London. Mm -hmm. And I, I, still, I still remember that when I announced it uh, in Denmark. I, it was a press meeting. It was a lunch. I invited everyone. And so many people turned up. Mm -hmm. And um, nobody knew why. And I, I'm a very, um, I'm a very shy person. I, uh, I'm an introvert, and I still remember how difficult it was for me to stand up and say, "Oh, oh welcome! Um, I'm really pleased to see everyone here." And I'm sure you're all sort of wondering why you're here. And I can tell you that I've decided to to move to London. And the next I can tell you, yes, I do save a lot of money in tax. Any more questions? And there was no questions whatsoever. And I said, okay, bon appetit, have a nice lunch and let's enjoy it. <laughs> and I could, I could have said, no, the, the traveling is so much easier out of London Heathrow. Everything is much, much easier. And, you know, yeah, but, and but, and but. Mentioned to to you to come to the situation. Yes, by the way, I saved money in tax. <laughs> so, I put it all up front, and there was not a question after that. So that was quite. And how fun. long were you in London for? Seven years. Seven years. Eighty-five till ninety-two. Maybe that's um, 
maybe that's how you that's obviously is how you got such an amazing UK following in badminton at that time right yeah um playing at the all England in in Wembley was actually playing a whole round no doubt the, the support was absolutely amazing yeah and and what what was the um how did you find that the standard uh, by comparison to what you'd been used to being coming from Denmark and coming from where you'd come from and competing at the levels? How did the UK feel? Did you feel it? Also, have you only ever played singles, Morton? Um, no, I played all three categories. I played all three. Um, my heart has always been in the singles. <laughs> Cannot run away from that. Um, but at the time in in the 80s there were very good badminton players in england in the men's singles with the, of course stephen badley nick yates darren hall Anas nielsen steve butler actually quite a good crowd of players in in the london area and, and we played together organized it every single day either going to wimbledon going to high wickham uh, go to redbridge or stuff like that and uh, we trained every single day, and um, it was good. It was good training. It worked out really well. And what are you like with training, Morton? Were you very self-disciplined, or have you? And also, when did coaching come into your life, or did you have? You know, when was the first time you remember having coach? Coach? Did you? Ne- did you say you'd never ever been coached ever? No. No. Never. Really. No. I've I have had a national coach coming in on court and say, "Oh, how do you feel today? Is it going according to plan?" So, I'm not really happy. I lost the game. <laughs> so, uh, no, uh, it was nice. Very different times. Um, and uh, we just have to sort it out all by ourselves. Travelling, training, um, everything. Really? It was just, and we, it was so you, did you have a manager or did you do it all yourself? I did not have a manager either. Did really? So, if you look at it now, it's incredible, isn't it? What what goes on right now? You know the, you know the whole groups of people that organise everything, transport, accommodation, you know, coaching, medical coaching. That you know these guys nowadays have they've got some. I was talking to Steen about the team of you know the the Danish team, and he was talking about the group. Obviously, he watched it, but the the group of people that is involved, each individual player, and each player having their own manager. And, you know, having meeting, I just found it incredible. It's just an absolute, yeah. When you consider that, the, and at the end of the day, the player is on his own on court, right? He's, you know, he's totally on his own. But at the end of the day, you're standing there playing against somebody, and that's, that was yeah. that brings me on to a question. Somebody sent me a question. Uh, this one, okay, who's this one from? Uh, that's it, Douglas Walker. I don't know if you know that. I mean, he's from Edinburgh. He's a he's a he's a Scottish coach incredibly well respected he's had so many hundreds i reckon thousands of badminton players through his fingertips with an edinburgh he's a, you know he's, he just brings on players and passes them through to the scottish squad and that kind of thing but i've interviewed him actually you'll find his video on there anyway so a message from douglas walker um who was the person that you least wanted to meet in events <laughs> Who is the person? Who was the person that you thought, "Oh no"? I I like to answer that question in a different way. Okay. Uh, because um, every time you see the draw, you always think that you're the most unlucky of everyone in the draw because you have the toughest draw of anyone. And if I could swap places with that one and that one and that one, that would make it so much easier. I think that the mind have a way to sort of persuade you to think, oh, you got the worst draw of them all. And at the end of the day, it all ended up pretty okay. And, um, you know, as and when you got going, you know, I did did good. I played well. I won a lot of tournaments. I, I would say that I have quite a funny statistics against uh, Yang Yang because I think, I'm, I'm not sure we were not that good at statistics either in those days, but um, I think I won the first 12 times I played him. Really? And then I lost one and I never beat him again. And I Whoa. think I lost another 12. So, you know, it's quite even. <laughs> but uh, 
But I, I must say, I, I did not like to play him. He, he was tricky. He was tricky for me. Well, that's interesting. And what was he like? Is he short or tall? Or what, yeah. What was it? What was it? What can I ask? What it was about his game? Um, he was the thing with China had two very very talented players. One was called Sao Chinhua, and the other one was Yang Yang. Both left-handers. They really played a very intelligent game, both of them. And uh, the crowd loved Sao Chinhua because he was a little bit more adventurous than Yang Yang. But it was a similar style of play. And uh, the funny thing is that I loved to play Sao. Mm -hmm. I only lost to him uh, on a very few occasions, and I beat him every single time. And he was the tough one to beat, but I liked to play him. But then there was this a little bit more steady version of Sao Jinhua, and that was Yang Yang. Yeah. And that annoyed me quite a lot. He, uh, everything came back, and uh, he, was, he was playing very good runs, and then uh, his game was um, quite tricky for me. How do you feel it's changed now, Morton? How do you feel? What do you think that... What do you think? I've got, I do have a question about technology and that kind of thing, but what do you think has changed in, in players now in, in general? What do you think generally about badminton, about how it's changed, do you think, compared to when you when you played at your at your peak, I suppose? You know, how do you feel um, badminton is in the style of play I'm talking about, I suppose? I know it's a general question. Of course, it's changed a lot. Lots and lots of things have changed. Um, we can we can go on for yes. days about yes. it, um, but I, I can say that I um, I have actually played at the All England, uh, competed at the All England with a wooden racket. Yeah. Yeah. Not that many would know that, but uh, until seventy eight seventy nine, uh, it was all wooden rackets, and then of course uh, all new technology came in and rackets started to become what we what we see today. Um, but uh, that is uh, a major transformation of uh, of your gear, of your your, your main gear, your racket. It completely changed in, in those years. Then, of course, I think the, the scoring system, playing um, three games to 15, but you have to have the serve to score points. Um, of course, that's changed. We all know that. It's 21 uh, running scores. But that has changed the, um, the the outlook of the game quite a lot, and um, it's a different game today than what it used to be. Do you still play badminton, Morton? No. <laughs> um, it, it, it's it's really it's really interesting because people who knows me and knew me knew that I was extremely. And I mean, you can underline it a million times when I say extremely competitive. Um, I seriously hated to lose. I know a lot of people are saying that, but I hated it. What well, you'd rage if you did lose, you'd rage. Yes, mm. I, I, when I was younger, I had a I had a very very bad temper. But when you're asking me now, when or if I play today, I I haven't got that competitive edge anymore at all. Um, I'm, I would be quite boring to play with because I would just say, okay, by the way, you can have it. It was in, it was out, never mind. You serve another time. Uh, you, you know, if I go on the golf course, I'm just a very, very poor amateur yeah, me too. when it comes me to too. golf. Yeah, but I love it, yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of, I've kind of with you. I, I had time out of it and I was very competitive, and, but the time I had out of it, um, when I came back to it, uh, that bit of me had gone and I actually started to enjoy it again. And obviously all the problems, that, all the things that I'd missed all the years. My brother played all the way through. Um, um, but yeah, the bit, the years that I'd missed, I guess in that time, I think at that time I thought, do you know, I used to love Badman. I just, this was in my early 30s, but 20 years ago, I, used to, I remember thinking, I used to love Badman, you know, I wonder what. I wonder if I could play it again. I went down to a local club and I went there and I thought, oh, you know, the standards of it. And I've, I, you can actually find yourself getting worse. And I, I'd stopped again for a few years. And then eventually I found my way into Edinburgh and I found myself getting good quality games regular. Um, but now I compete fiercely with kids in their 20s. And 
do you not have that? Do you not have part of you that thinks, do you know, do you, just have no, fun, like we're going to play I, doubles I, and just and just remember? Or, or do you think it'd just be so frustrating that you wouldn't, God, I used to, God, that used to be so easy for me, kind of thing. You'd, by the way, you'd still be amazing, right? You'd still be amazing. If you did go on court, you'd still be amazing. Even with a 3.7x, I, I reckon. I don't think so. Um, perhaps my racket skills are quite safe. So, um, I'm, I'm sure the movement on course is not so good as it used to be. But, but what I'm saying is that I, I really think that badminton is a fantastic game, and I still think it, and I still enjoy it, but I just don't have that edge anymore. So I, I don't feel like going on court and playing and uh, being competitive about it. I, I have no desire to do so. So uh, I, I go for a run in the forest by the sea. I um, go for lovely walks. Um, you know, um, that, that's much more me. And, uh, you know, I don't have to have any appointments with anyone. Um, you know, I can just go out my front door and I will be down in the forest, in, down by the beach in five lovely. to 10 minutes. And okay then, there's a nice. question. When was the last time you hit a badminton show? Um, I, I do a little bit of coaching lately. Good. In the, the last few months, I've done some nice. coaching. So yes, I've been Good. Uh, a few shots by uh, you know. Say, oh no, you have to do this. This is the way you have to you know, hold the racket. This is the grip. And, uh, see if uh, you can get it a little bit earlier and stuff like that. So yes, I've been hitting a few shots lately, but. Uh, I cannot remember. Really? The last time you played the game? When, when I played, no. Can't what remember. was your last racket that you played with? What what racket did you... Did, were you a Carlton man at the time? I mean, I was a Carlton man during those times, but a few years ago, they, yeah, I, I went to Yonex eventually. I played Carlton. I also played Wilson. Oh, did you? And at, at the end of my career, I played Wilson. Then coming back to Denmark after, after London in ninety two. Um, the Danish company Forza just Forza, started yeah. with one of my good, with one of my good mm-hmm. friends, and he asked, oh, uh, "Do you want to be, you know, part of it? Uh, anything?" And I said, "Yeah." So um, I, I played with uh, Forza for a few years um, after my playing career, if you can say that. So um, I played with a little bit of everything. What was your last Carlton racket? Do you remember? Did you ever have a Boron Classic? Mm, yeah, oh, I think that was the one. The, one, the brown one. Wow. Ah, I think that's the one. It was brown I... carbon. It was a single carbon. It was a, called a Boron. Such a great name, Boron Classic. It was just such a James Bond style name for a for, for a yeah. and I remember it was a single piece composition. And I just remember thinking, "Wow, look at that!" I was, a, I think, for years I had a three point seven X, and eventually I used to. We had radiators along the side, and just the head ended up losing shape and that that yeah. kind of thing. And the string, I don't, I don't. Do you know what? I don't even know what string tension we used to use. I, I couldn't even tell you. But I tell you what, I do remember. Tell me if you remember this: rough and smooth. Yes. And and also, I was going to say something else. What was it? Also, do you remember getting a single string or a pair? No. I did. I could go, you could go to the sports shop and they'd repair a single string. See if your strings are broken. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll get you. I'll get you. Yes, we used to. Yeah. That. Yes, we did. Yeah, I, I had some of my rackets when I was a kid. I had some egg repairs. <laughs> <laughs> Then there was no good anymore. There was never any question of what the tension was. I mean, I wouldn't have a clue what the tension was. It must have been about 14 pounds when I was playing. I don't know what, it, you know, the, considering when you think of that. And now you, now you break a string and they get the first thing they do is get a pair of scissors and cut through it. Uh, it's absolutely yeah. incredible. Let, right, let me go back to my questions. Uh, when did you start playing? What age were you first started? Uh, did fam- members of the family play? Do you have any brothers or sisters, Morton? I have a younger brother, two years, two months, and 22 days younger than me. And did he play? <laughs> um, we played as kids, but he never really, uh, it never really took off for him. Uh, he, he was a, a good club player, but um, he was much more interested to, in, in the family business. We were running a, a, a men's shop and a shoe shop, and uh, he was far more interested in, in that. 
I'm going all over the place here, but I'd like to ask you a question about well, just think about being in, developing and on and that kind of thing. And I keep on thinking of things, and I've thought about things for a few days. What um, what do you think it is? Could you put a golden ticket, a golden bullet on somebody? I'm, I'm you know, is there something? What would you think the golden thing is for a player now, um, to be to be successful in badminton? What do you think? You know, when you know when. When somebody is a child, somebody has a has a son or a daughter that plays badminton and loves badminton, and they go to school every day. And that somebody says to them, guidance teacher says, "What do you want to do?" And I just I don't know what I want to do. All I know is I love badminton. What what do you think of that? What 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 do you say to people like that? Do you, having made a journey where you've had a career in badminton, you know how much of a realistic you know with your own children, for example, uh, do you have that thought? What you know? Do they? What do you think of them? that it's, it's always a tough call i think um but i honestly believe that the um, the kids must love the game to such an extent that they simply can't stay away from it um i think that's amazing um, and i i got i got three kids two boys and a girl and the two boys from my first marriage and um the Oldest one of them, Christian, is, um, was a very good squash player. He got to around 50 on the world wow. ranking in squash. Uh, Thomas, the, uh, the second boy, um, played squash as well, but uh, did only, only make it sort of on national level in Denmark, uh, sort of division level. Um, and uh, my little daughter, 26 years of age, uh, from my second marriage, um, she played badminton, but I, I could see very, very quickly that she did not have that desire yeah. to uh, to really make it. She was not competitive. She was there for the social side of it. She enjoyed it. She's got good shots. She's moving well on court. Everything is kind of fine, but she just hasn't got that desire to really, really go out there and do it. So... I, I really, we had lots of good experiences, uh, Josephine and I, because um, sometimes I followed her for a tournament. And once she said to me, Dad, have you noticed that everyone, kids and parents, they're always arguing. They're always angry. And you and I, we are having so much fun. And I just loved it. You know, that, that was just the thing. Um, she enjoyed it, I enjoyed it, uh, and we just had a laugh and, and that was it. So it's um, maybe the thing that you think, to, as a parent, you think to yourself, they're never going to focus on anything else, might as well just let them do it. <laughs> they're never going to be distracted enough, all they want to do is be on it. Obviously there has to be a natural talent, but I, I think I'm quite interested in the idea that somebody has a natural, that somebody has an ability. Um, and I suppose the thing is about, is that, anybody could be an amazing badminton player if they dedicate enough of themselves to something. Um, do you think that is a thing or do you think you have, you, do, how much of it do you think could be taught? How much it could be somebody that just absolutely loves it and then the realisation that it's probably not going to be good enough? How much do you think people can be trained? It feels to me more like, you know, people, uh, the, because of the physical side and people, you know, the, you know, the amazing physical, you know, it feels sometimes when I watch badminton now, it feels like it's a, a competition, a fitness competition to see you can keep going for the longest. You know, it's it almost becomes like a, a cardio exercise thing. And you just wonder if that, you know, if that kind of attitude brings a lot of, allows a lot of people to compete that probably wouldn't otherwise. Because I think you're a lot more creative and I think a lot of people are a lot more creative. But nowadays it seems to be that people can play for a long time. You know, it's a, an endurance thing. I'm going to absolutely wear them out. Um, I, I would say I, I disagree a little bit with you. Um, my, my game was a very uh, endurance game. Awesome. It was uh, long, long rallies, physical. Um, the good thing for my game was that we, we never knew the end because uh, it could you know, be service over, service over, service over. We could play for two hours. Um, it would never end here in, in Today's my it will end. So it's a different approach. 
Um, but I, I think that badminton is an immensely intelligent game and um, it takes a lot um, to, to be able to play the game. I, I think that, uh, of course, talent alone is not making it, but you have to have a, a lot of it. Uh, if you don't have an enormous amount of talent for playing the game, and then on top of that, applying all the, the discipline and uh, the understanding and being able to really see how the game is unfolding, then um, it will be tough to be any good. You can train forever and you'll never get there. Yeah, so um, um, so it's a very complex game. Yeah, well, that's good. it's yeah, interesting very... that you're into chess. I quite like that idea that you're into something such a, so yeah kind of the creative uh, the creative side i love deception i think that's a big thing for me in badminton deception is the is critical you know it's yeah he's some of the best players in the world i think the deception is what gets me you know this last minute flick of the wrist you think oh my goodness it's just phenomenal i just, I just love it i just love it um going back to going back to my question i would like, yeah. to, uh, like to add on to it that this is actually a, a personal wish that uh, badminton will be played with faster shuttles. Really? There's a lot of, uh, a lot of talk about that lately, isn't there? Shuttles getting slower. Yeah, um, the shuttles are getting slower and slower and slower, which means that um, the, the game, the, the game of badminton, is disappearing, and I, I think that's a mm. shame. I think we should uh, bring faster shuttles back into play. But that's a personal wish. It, it, is it about the weight of the shuttle? Is that the technical thing? I think it is, isn't it? The, the heavier it is, the faster it is. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. I love the technology of badminton shuttles. I love that. You look on, if you ever look on, I don't know if you ever looked at the manufacture of shuttles on YouTube. It's fascinating. How do they make shuttles? It also, is. one of my favourite YouTube searches actually is how to repair a badminton shuttle. Have you ever seen that one? It's hilarious. <laughs> it's absolutely more. It's absolutely hilarious. You should go on it. Look at can I repair a badminton shuttle? And what you find is somebody in Asia, literally plucking every feather of every of a, out of a tube of new shuttles and like literally leaning them up. And he's got a pair of tweezers. He cuts a string between them. He twists the new. Honestly, it's hilarious. You can just imagine one one rally and it's gone. <laughs> the repair is. <laughs> Honestly, it is absolutely the funniest thing. I love it. Um, okay, the biggest strength in your game. Do, what would you say the biggest strength in your game was back in the day, I suppose? Um, I, I think my biggest strength was I, I was well prepared. Uh, I was physically very strong. Um, I was very patient. Um, but I had a good understanding of the game. I had tactically good understanding. How much research did you do on your competition before you played them? Um, once again, I have to disappoint people. Um, it's all in the mind. Is it, was it? You never thought, right? I'm going to watch what his games like, or that. I suppose it wasn't available back then, like it is now. You know, you couldn't see that. No. You couldn't see them play, could you? No, we couldn't see them, of course. Uh, but uh, it was all, it was all a memory in my mind. When I played the player once, I could uh, easily remember. And uh, I was quite fortunate to have such memory. Yeah, amazing. I've nearly finished this. And I know I've spent so much of your time this afternoon. Um, what shuttles did you use? Um, did you always use feathers? Question. Have you always used feathers? Or when was the first time you used feathers? Do you, is it is club badminton a thing with feathers in Denmark always? Or? Always, always. I, I remember when I was a kid, I, I went to Prague and uh, we played with plastic shuttles. And that was a horrific <laughs> experience. Really? So I remember that and I said, never again. <laughs> really? Well, that's interesting because at the time, I guess that time, the 80s, 90s, it was a big thing, right? Plastic, you know, the Carlton, those yes. plastic shuttles were everywhere, right? Every club you went to. And I was, I was talking to somebody about this and how... I just remember being a massive luxury, getting a new shuttle, a new one. Oh, wow, we've got a new one. Because they lasted the night, a whole one shuttle lasted the night. So when you got a new one, it felt like, wow. Kind of, where now it seems to be, I mean, I don't know how many shuttles they go through. It's crazy how many shuttles they go through nowadays. I was quite interested. I interviewed John ha John Hancock, who's uh, kind of involved with competitions for Babylon in England. And um, in 
and he was talking about Yonex delivering amazing how many shuttles of Yonex deliver and take away. So what do you mean take away? He says, oh yeah, the lorry comes and takes away the shuttles after the tournament as well. I had no idea. It's amazing, isn't it? The things you find yeah. out. Um, what challenges have you faced? Professional, uh, how long are you a professional player? Uh, how do you feel about losing? I think you've well and truly covered that one. Uh, physical issues that you had problems with your ankles. Is that right? Um, did you have it during the game? Did you ever have problems with like ongoing Achilles, ankles, shoulders, that kind of thing? You're quite lucky. No. Wow. Um, no, I was very fortunate. And okay, so when you, I'm, 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 I'll wrap this up because I know I've spent so much of your time. When it came to retiring from badminton, how, what was that decision, and what, how much thought had you given to what your future career would look like? Did you start doing some more kind of of one thing? Or sorry, yeah, I'll ask that question simply. How did you know when it was time to retire, and what did you do immediately after retiring? I suppose. I I wanted um, I wanted to remain on on the top. I wanted to remain in the top three in the world, and um, I started losing matches I shouldn't lose because I was getting old. I was getting slow. I was getting a few injuries, and mainly pulled muscles and so on so small things but it just took longer and longer time to overcome it and get back into it so i i think i was uh, in the top three the top four in the world and i decided that i don't want to play anymore and uh, not thinking about what should happen afterwards uh, I, I simply made a decision that badminton was finished this is it, this is enough. I've spent 15, 16 years working as hard as I could every single day, trying to twist my talent as much as I could. And uh, time was up and I didn't want to prolong it. I know some other players are feeling differently about it and I, I perfectly accept that. But uh, for me personally, for myself, I just couldn't do it. And I decided to stop virtually from day to the next. Wow. Wow. It's uh yeah, it's quite a, it's quite a daunting thing. And then the next day, did you have a break, a holiday? I'll let you. I'll let you go go in a second. I'm just I'm I'm finished really. But did you get a break? Did what did Don't what worry. did you do after? Did you stop? How long did you went? Okay, so if one day you decide I'm going to retire. What age were you as well when you retired? That day, what age were you? I was 33. When you're th it's okay. So when you're 33, you thought, right, I can't do this anymore. What was that like for the next six months? Tell, talk me through it. It was different. <laughs> <laughs> Very different. Um, I, I think I added on a stone. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that was the first thing that happened. And then, um, you know, I, I actually just, I enjoyed life. I, um, I was going for runs, um, yeah. not with the stop watching my hand anymore, but simply just going for for the fun of it. And I, I do enjoy it. And uh, yeah, amazing. I just enjoyed life. I, I moved back to I moved back to Denmark. There lots of things happened. I, I got divorced. Um, I met my new, well, not my new, but my present wife. Um, we've been together for thirty years now. So congratulations, um, amazing, yeah. yeah. Lots of things have happened, and uh, that's good. And I remember when I was in Copenhagen, um, I I saw that the uh, Danish Badminton Association were um, advertising for the first time ever for a uh, performance director, and I had serious questions with myself whether I should apply for it or not. I couldn't really see myself not having had a coach for all the years and uh, suddenly having to be in such a situation. I decided to apply and I decided that I wanted to be a different performance director than anyone else. And uh, I think I kept my promise and uh, I've been part of many extremely good results and I'm very happy for that. And uh, the next assignment coming up is obviously in early April, starting uh, as uh, performance director for London, England. And congratulations! I'm very much yeah, congratulations! That's brilliant news. That's uh, yeah, it's exciting. I think you've got um, 
a great a great uh, provenance. I think your name is uh, you know everybody knows um, Morton Frost Hansen. So that's uh, yeah, that's a that's a that's a big start. I think it's um, and what is it? Um, I, I suppose what is it you think you bring? What do you think you bring that's different? As what do you try and impart from a guy that's never had a coach? What do you try and impart on on players? Then do you think just to, yeah? What do you think of that? I, I think the, one of the most important parts is that um, I don't believe me just walking into the office or into the badminton hall and saying hi to the players and coaches and all that. And that's it. I, I really, really honestly don't believe that. I, I have to earn my respect. And I have to work hard for that. I don't take anything for granted. And I will work hard. And uh, we will try to set up a really strong, good system, transparent. I, I want it to be fair. I think it's very, very important. It's a fair system that players and coaches can see themselves in the system and they can actually understand it. I think that's extremely important. Whether you sometimes like the decision or are not happy with the decision is another matter, but you must be able to understand why that decision is made, perhaps. And I think that's extremely important. I think something I'm very aware of with badminton players is that it's, it's such a young sport. You know, people, people have realise the talent at a very young age now and the, the game is exceptional at, at a very young age really up until kind of mid-twenties kind of thing and you know I, I just feel that they're kind of um, I, I guess I guess they don't really have it's, I shouldn't say mature but they don't have real life experience if you understand what I mean you know you've come from a very young teenage age to being shifted around you play badminton you love your badminton do you have real life experience probably not and you know, so that I think that some people forget that you know, badminton players are still with a lot of respect for like children. You know, they they've got a lot to learn, and you know, dealing with people and not being irrational like children. You know, so you've got to have a very mature brain. I think probably a, a fatherly figure is not a bad thing. I suppose with these types of things, and um, because they spend so much time with you, I suppose. But I think that's what people, just for me anyway, personally, I just feel that everybody forgets how young, you know, they've come from a very young age of being shipped around, playing mostly every day, right? By the time they've reached Milton Keynes, they've played every single day of life. They're getting shifted around all their life. You know, they have no commercial experience. For me, the commercial side of not knowing how to financially support yourself as a badminton player is important. And, you know, there's just expectation to go and find sponsorship locally to themselves, all of those kind of things. And it's a real eye opener. You know, these, you know, somebody going to a business and saying, would you support me in traveling to events, competing and all those types of things. And, you know, I just think, yeah, I just think there's a lot, there's a lot in that. I think there's, you know, people forget there's a talent and there's a, there is a, also there's, I think Valbenton does bring big personalities, which is a good thing because they're, you know, the, you know, the pigeon chest sticking out kind of thing on a badminton court, the confidence that people feel on a badminton court when they have an amazing talent and an ability in something, it brings out real confidence in it. It can certainly make big personalities, there's no question. So I think you've, uh, yeah, you've got your work cut. <laughs> You're always going to have that, I think. You know. Yeah, but I, I once again, I say I, I wouldn't entirely agree with you because I, I think the thing is that uh, a very famous uh, Danish philosopher uh, Kierkegaard is saying that you live life forward and you understand it backwards. That's interesting. And of course I, I like that yeah, very much. Okay. Uh, but to believe that you know everything and your players because yeah. they are younger than you do not know so much. Uh, you don't know what they've been going through in their lives and uh, I think you should have the greatest respect for people and try to understand where they come from and see how you can help them and not believing that you just know better than them because you're older than that. them, perhaps more experienced than them. So you really have to um, get down from the high horse and uh, really work with people, get under the skin. Empathise, is that it? And see how, how you can help them in the best possible yeah, way. Empathy. Good, great. Okay, I'll, uh, so I'll wrap it up. Uh, looking forward to this one. Great if you managed to get the other. Yeah. This is, is a question. Lord, uh, looking forward to this one. It'd be great if you managed to get the other half of the dream duo, Gillian Clark. <laughs> That's my next challenge, Morton. So you must have a word. Put in a word for me, please. 
I, uh, yeah. I'll see you next yeah. week. So I'll, I'll yeah, get it. Good. <laughs> Morton Frost, thank you very much. It's been awesome. I've really, really enjoyed that. Yeah. And we're we're, so we're friends now. Thank you so much. Enjoy the Thanks for having me. Sorry, I did not agree with everything, but that's, like that. you know, no, I like it. I like it a lot. Thank you, Morton. Have a great night. Take Thank care. You. Speak soon. Bye. 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 Well, that was quite amazing. Uh, real eye openers. I have to say a little bit um, starstruck, um, but I really enjoyed it. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Take care. I'll upload that later. Bye.